Hi guys and welcome back to day 21 of Inktober and today was another one of those super late nights. I think this was by far my latest right now. It's actually 2.55 in the morning um, but I was just so immersed in working on this piece. I was really excited about this one and it ended up being a much bigger more time-consuming thing that I kind of than I thought of when I first started but it was definitely worth it in my opinion. I feel really happy with this one. But when I first started sitting down, getting ready to sketch it out, I was planning on doing one in um, half size of what I was doing now. So uh, this size right here, is, which is what I usually do for like my little watercolor painting. So I've done a lot of these sizes and I even prepared it and everything. And I sketched this idea out and it just kept getting bigger and more elaborate. And I didn't want to cut out a lot of the stuff that I was developing out because I really like the look of it. So I decided to bump up to the next size or it's basically double this. It's not broken down into half and uh, that ended up being definitely the right choice but it added so much more time on this piece which was great because it gave me more time to work on a piece that I was really happy with and excited about. Um, but the start of this piece was I have been wanting to do like a fortune teller type character for a long time now and I actually have a sketch over on the corner of my desk that I pulled out because I've had it sketched for months and months now maybe since like the very beginning of the year and I have uh, a whole little watercolor piece of paper torn out to the right size because it's actually a square piece and it's been sitting there and I haven't gotten to it yet and I was thinking about doing it but I didn't do it today because it was going to be too long, too big of a piece but then this one ended up being like the equal amount of work but I'm glad that I did a different one because now I can still go back and do this one but the point is is that I was kind of thinking about fortune tellers and I liked that idea of that kind of a character and I wanted to do one of those today when I started sketching so I just searched that in Pinterest and that's actually a really cool search because it brought up a lot of very different stuff. I got a lot of like uh, makeups for like a costume of being a fortune teller. So there's really dramatic looks that was really inspiring. And I found uh, vintage photographs of people in kind of this fortune tellery kind of clothing and look. I found jewelry that was really cool. And uh, I also found those like machines where it's like you put in a quarter and there's like an autom automaton giving you your fortune. Anyways, there was just this huge array of really inspiring images that I could work off of. And that's what really got me very excited about including these different elements and different ideas. So it was a really uh, fruitful search, I think. And it was one of those terms that just got my ideas really rolling. I love I love um, these these themes like a fortune teller these very um I don't know how to describe it where it's it's almost this creepy subdued magic to it where it's very unknowable and mysterious but almost something that you could see being real in a real world but that that stuff is just really cool to me so this was a really fun one to start jumping off from. And when I started working on this, like after I'd sketched out and I was about to start inking, I got a little bit nervous because I have never inked this way before because when I'm inking on top of a, a light box, so far I've only used micron pens or like brush pens at the most. And those just feel a lot more controllable for me at least and something that I can build up more. So when I was starting to do the light box, it felt a little bit nerve wracking because I wasn't really sure if it would work quite the way that I was used to. And I know that basically it's the same concept, but for a second there I was, I was kind of nervous that I wouldn't be able to see the lines well enough for me to be able to confidently put down these strokes. But it turned out to actually be pretty good. I didn't have any issues that I was thinking about. So it turned out to be something that I'll definitely do more of in the future. Um, obviously I really enjoy doing brush work for the line work so this is definitely something that I needed to learn and get used to but um, yeah when I was starting to do the line work I don't normally like I normally don't ever think about oh no what if I 
mess this up. I just, I dive into it and when things happen, I find a way to deal with it and make it work. But when I started doing the line work, it hit me that I was like, oh no, what if I mess up? I've messed up a lot of times on a lot of different pieces in Inktober and I would be so sad if I messed up on this one. And it gave me this like stage fright almost. I was nervous to start because I didn't want to mess it up. And it was a really weird feeling. And I was like, no, if I keep trying to ink while well, I'm being super nervous and super like tight and scared to put down these lines that might be slightly off, then it's going to look worse than if I just loosen up and let it be what it was. So I had to take a minute to like remind myself that it's okay if I mess it up, I will find a way to fix it and I probably won't knock the ink over. I was like having that flash in my head about, oh no, what if I knock the ink over? I need to be super careful. and. Yeah, so I think I just kind of got into my own head for a second there. It was a little weird, but but I was able to reconnect with what I actually wanted to do and to loosen up on that. And when I started out doing ink washes, you know, several days past in Inktober, a lot of days past actually, um, I usually would let the um, layer of ink wash before dry as much as it could until I needed to paint next to it and then I would dry it with the heat gun, the, the heat tool that I have. But lately I've been drying it right away and the reason that I prefer to do that now is because the ink wash dries so much lighter that way I can immediately tell how to adjust it and how it's going to contrast with areas around it. Plus it's just easier to keep moving forward and being able to work on the next step that I need to when it's completely dry. So I do make sure that I dry it all the way. Also, um, if you're working in watercolor or ink wash, uh, one thing to remember is you only work on it if it's either sopping wet or bone dry. Don't, uh, don't mess with it when it's like in between because that'll mess up your nice smooth washes if that's the look you're going for. But yeah, so I, I made sure that I was drying them nice and quick and I can move on. And one thing that's kind of funny that I was noticing is that the ink not only dries lighter, but it also dries cooler, I think. I'm trying to remember which way it was. I was noticing is that as it's wet, it looks one temperature and when it dries, it kind of cools. Yeah, I think it, it dries into a much cooler gray tone, which I thought was kind of funny because when I first put a wash down, it looks like the temperatures are kind of fighting and they're not a gray scale within the same spectrum, but as they dry, they turn into the same, so. And I definitely wanted to make sure that I had the values arranged in the way that I wanted to, which is always very important, especially always. <laughs> but uh, for this one, I did want to make sure that her hair was darkest and her skin was kind of more of a medium and that headband, headdress area was um, the lightest. And I think that for the most part, it turned out pretty good. I decided that I also wanted the background to be very light so that her hair would contrast. And since that was the border of her shape, I needed to make sure that it was really contrasting. And since only a little bit of uh, the flower was going past, it was definitely best to have a very light background. So she became a dark figure on a light background, which is a good way to make sure that the thing that you want to be standing out and the focal point is popping forward. It's just make sure that the values are opposites for what's behind it. But I knew at the beginning that I was going to include gold in this piece. I love using that ink, obviously. I'm probably going to run out before Inktober's over because I love this ink. But, uh, but I did definitely want to use it. I wanted it to go with this um, fortune teller -y vibe that I had going on. So I knew that I wasn't going to incorporate it, but I wasn't quite sure how yet. And I was at the point where I was almost ready to add those final touches. And I was talking to Lee about it. And I was saying that, oh, I'll just do one of those like half circles behind her head that silhouettes her in gold. And he was like, yeah, you've done a lot of those half circles, especially recently in October. And at first I was like, no, I just want to do what I want. It's my style. I just like doing circles behind people's heads. And, and then I was like, no, I guess he is kind of right. I do do that a lot and I have been doing it a lot and I've been relying that on a lot. And so it gave me a moment where I was like, okay, maybe I should think of a possible different way of using this gold ink in this piece. There could be something that's better. And I am so glad that I gave or that you know I had that opportunity to rethink that step that I was going to do 
because I thought about this idea that I'm doing right here and it is this element that I feel like pulls together all these other details and the idea and the mood that I wanted for this piece and just finishes it off and I feel like without this it does it just doesn't have that finishing quality that I wanted and it's almost like all these other details are bringing it towards this final point because um, I really wanted her to look very ghostly and kind of almost undead and I feel like that one detail of having her throat slashed and she's bleeding gold it really finalizes that feeling of her being ghostly and not quite alive and I'm just so happy that I was able to have a second of <laughs> rethinking that step so that I could make sure that it was one that I love so much better. But that is everything for today's Inktober. Whew, I feel so achieved that I made it and I got it done and I got this video edited and while it's still not you know the 21st anymore at least at least it was all in one run and I started before the 21st ended so I think it should count. But uh, yeah this piece as usual she will be up on my shop and available and yeah, I think this is probably, this is definitely my favorite piece of Inktober so far. I just feel like this is definitely putting me in the right direction, giving me ideas for future ones that I want to do more of this theme and more of this idea and really explore that more. So I'm, ugh, I'm really happy with today's Inktober. I feel really productive and very tired obviously but anyways uh thank you so much for watching and i will see you guys tomorrow for the next inktober so yeah oh and also the link for my shop is at the very bottom in the corner of this video so if you want to check out her and check out all the other stuff that i have available you can check that out there anyways uh, thanks again and i'll see you tomorrow